Hello, this is Dimitris Kuzis Lukas, and in this video I'm going to show you how to work with Snark.js. Um, there is nothing original in this video, everything I do is based on uh, this demo here, this fantastic video, and basically in the last few minutes uh, he presents a demo. So I'm going to reproduce that a little bit more slowly and um, see some things more in depth. I'm also going to do this in the context of this article and we will see that this will help a little bit. All the steps are available in this URL and you can see here the steps that we are going to use. I am going to run it on an Ubuntu uh, virtual machine. So here is our virtual machine. Uh, here are the steps. So those are the steps you can find in this tutorial just uh, in a graphic form. Okay, It will help us understand uh, what better what's going on. We have already installed, so done those two steps, and we can go and run this MKD factor, CD factor. I guess there is nothing magic here. We just create an empty directory. Now let's go a little bit to this article and uh, see the formalism. So we can see here they talk about an example program. This program is also known as the circuit. Okay, and in this case, it's uh, a hash function. So you can see here the definition of ZK snark, and we can see it has three elements G, P, V. So G is the generator and takes the circuit and a random number lambda and creates two keys, the prover key and the verifier key. So let's uh, go back to the tutorial and uh, we see here circuit.circom. Uh, this is uh, a way to express those circuits. Uh, in uh, this compiler framework they have developed. So we can see here they have a multiplier, two private uh, inputs A and B, one output C. And what they want to prove is uh, that there exist such factors and we know them. Uh, so if we multiply A and B together they give C. In other words that we know how to factorize uh, C. And uh, so let's put this in a file, so cut circuit circum. Okay, we can see exactly the same thing. So in terms of the um, formalism of this article, this is the function C. This is the thing that the generator will take along with a random lambda. Then we have um, a, an intermediate step, which is compiling this circuit.circom to a JSON file. So this is a meta language, a very a powerful abstraction and when we run this command we can see a way more ugly representation in some sense uh, more verbose but this is exactly uh, what our snark.js system needs to take and we can see uh, many meta information like a number of arguments inputs and outputs but also the program we have is expressed uh, in here uh, by using uh, language primitives. So we can see here, take A, multiply by B, and then set signal C. So here's the representation. Of course, I prefer to write this language than, uh, um, you know, an argument in a JSON file. So a good job, amazing uh, abstraction, well done. And um, so the next uh, step is here to get some uh, statistics out of circuit JSON, uh, which is okay. Number of wires and print constraints, and it tells us that um, here, if we omit these, it's exactly the same. If we use circuit.json as our file name, so we can see here the expression is a multiplied by b minus c equals zero, which is equivalent uh, to our expression up there. So if this holds true, uh, this one also will hold true. So we have already done this step and we have circuit JSON and this is before we even begin. So this is still uh, creating this circuit C uh, in a way that our system can process it. Now this is the key step, snark.js setup. And when I run that, uh, we can see that it creates a proving key and a verification key. So you can see here that it has some number in there and uh, an interesting thing is let's let's spot here this finishes at 556 
if I rerun this, you see a completely different number, right? Uh, so this um, shows us that there is this lambda argument. There is some randomness uh, in the process of creating those two key, proving key and verification key. Uh, despite the randomness, the rest of the uh, process is very deterministic. So we have done all this upper level now, and in terms of formalism, now we have the PK and VK here. Uh, so we can uh, now have uh, a prover and a verifier. Those are two independent entities. And uh, so um, we need, uh, I think it's called witness, which is the inputs um, in a compact standardized way. So uh, our inputs in this case are A and B. So uh, given an input A equals 3 and B equals 11, we expect the output C to be a 33 uh, since this will satisfy this equation here. So input.json Okay, now we uh, convert this with this Spark J with this snark.js calculate witness to a witness file. So you can see the 3 and the 11 we gave, the 33 which is the output which is calculated and 1 which is some internal signal. So now this is the witness.json. So now if you notice uh, here we have public and private uh, arguments, right? Private, private and output here, so not a private. And so this is how uh, snark.js proof knows what to put on the proof and what on the public JSON. So the public information is here uh, called X and the private or the witness part. Uh, the private witness part is the W. So the prover takes the proving key, uh, a public input X and the private witness W. Okay, and we can see that we can get all this with snark.js proof. Good. So let's see what we have now. Uh, we have a proof JSON which has again um, coordinates on a polynomial or something like that and public json which has the only public argument we have which is 33 so effectively uh, we just have a public number 33 the output and we attest with the proof that we know a number a and the number b that can give us the 33. Obviously this is an easy task but uh, for, for this small number that we created in this way but for an arbitrary large number this would require us to factor that number. So we now have the proof, so we have the P over here and now we can start looking at the verifier side which has two options, one is done by the uh, snark.js framework and it's uh, quite easy actually, we just do snark.js, verify and note that it takes some time. Okay, so this means that it checked actually uh, the public JSON, the proof JSON and the verification key and uh, it figured out that our, our proof is valid. And again, let's assume that we change something, for example, the public to JSON from 33 uh, to 331. Uh, let's see what happens now. Of course, it's invalid. So we just run the verifier, which we can see that formally uh, it finds if there exists or not a W, so a witness, uh, which ex of course we don't have to know, but we have to know if it exists. Uh, such that this uh, circuit is, um, is satisfied. All this is good, but uh, we saw that there is a complicated process taking place in SNARK.js Verify, and we would like this to happen inside the smart contracts. So here is a helper generate verifier. And now we have, uh, so we are here on the right side, and we have a verifier sol. So we can see some solidity here. So now we can copy paste this in Remix and we can compile it. Then uh, deploy it actually here, the verifier. 
and we can see here the verify pool and it gets quite a few arguments and so we have this helper generate call that creates all those arguments and we can note here 21 hex which is the value 33 so this is actually the public um, value and all those other ones are effectively uh, the um, contents of the proof JSON file. So you put them here and we run and a few seconds later we can see false which is interesting because uh, I have used the old version of the contract here so one more proof that uh, uh, the lambda argument is important so I update the smart contract compile completed redeploy the verifier and now we can see the output here boolean true so uh, this, uh, this proof is valid and if we have a look at the solidity contract uh, it's all standard code so it doesn't change uh, if you um, use one circuit or another the only things that change are those uh, which effectively uh, encode the verification key so the rest of the code is always the same and we can see a static call here uh, so uh, it has a few static call methods which is uh, EVM assembly for multiplications uh, and additions of, of those points so if you notice circuit.json is not used after snark.js setup so all, the, all that is really used is proving key and verification key and this encodes all the information that circuit.json has in it with a small exception of course of witness but that's a small structural thing this is also shown on the formalism here and it's interesting to see other uh, circuits uh, in circom lib uh, like for example uh, binary subtraction and you can see that it looks a lot like very log and one interesting one is of course uh, the gates so simple gates like and and or gates and uh, you can see that uh, they have somewhat unusual definitions uh, but they're nice and uh, here's XOR and actually if we take this and we go to circuit and we replace of course we have to do those private okay now we can change input and put some binary values here for example uh, 1 and 0 for this one and now we should be able to rerun the whole flow compile the circuit snark.js setup calculate witness create a proof let's check that verify works correct uh, let's do generate verifier let's see the solidity ok we recompile, destroy the contract, and deploy the new one, generate call, and we can see here one, which is the public parameter. So the question here is if we can find the two values that can have uh, an XOR of one, which should be easy. Uh, but anyway, uh, we claim we can find one, and a few seconds later we get the output, which is true. Now if we check the difference between the two solidity contracts we can verify that actually it's just the verification key that's different. So we can see two very small primitives and a little bit below uh, actually uh, they show us the type of uh, functions so instead of just multiplication or an XOR we should be able to evaluate uh, complex numbers like those you can see here X are uh, the public parts of the values W are the witnesses that should be uh, stored offline or be encrypted and by using those functions we can validate that we have valid transactions 
no matter that uh, we might not know what the actual value is, so how much currency there is there in the smart contract. So we will have a hash of a currency instead of the, the actual currency and uh, by validating those two functions we can have uh, secure contracts, i.e. contracts that don't generate or destroy currency or uh, are invalid in the sense of transferring more money, more funds that are not available. So this concludes this presentation. We saw how ZK Snarks work and how we use the CIRCOM compiler and the SNARK.js uh, as presented in this uh, conference and I hope you find it useful. Thanks a lot.